Hi, and welcome to another video from Microchip's Memory Technology Series. This video will explain how both conventional flash cells and super flash cells are both written and erased. We're going to use a side-by-side -side comparison to do this. This is a cross-section of a flash memory cell. And over here is the same cross-section of a super flash memory bit. There are two key structural differences. First, in a standard flash cell, the floating gate and the control gate align vertically and form the full transistor gate between the source and the drain. But in a super flash memory cell, the control gate is split, covering just part of the floating gate here and then also serving as the direct gate over the drain edge here. Second, notice this raised edge on the floating gate. Here, this edge creates an electric field focus point between the floating gate and the control gate. In flash cells, erasing means transferring electrons from the floating gate, and programming is transferring electrons onto this floating gate. First, let's cover programming or writing the cells. For conventional flash, the control gate is raised to a high programming voltage. Let's use 10 volts. The source and substrate are grounded, and the drain is biased up. Let's use 7 volts here. This turns the transistor on, and electrons flow from the source to the drain. Some percent of these electrons are hot enough to jump across this tunneling oxide and get trapped on the floating gate. The term for this programming action of capturing electrons on the floating gate is hot electron injection. For superflash, because the control gate manages the drain edge directly, we reverse the channel direction, and the hot electrons are injected into the floating gate in this region where the control gate and the floating gate are close. This structure creates a very strong, very focused electric field. Note that the control gate, in this case, can now be a lower voltage because it directly controls the drain edge of the channel. So a much lower voltage can form this strong injection field. For both conventional flash and super flash, only the bits that are to be a zero logic level will be programmed in this way. The one logic level bits, or the unprogrammed bits, will be left alone. To prevent programming, the high voltages are just not applied to those untargeted cells. Now let's look at reading the cells. Here, these bits were not programmed. So there is no buildup of electrons on the floating gates. And here, these bits are programmed, and so now have a negative voltage on the floating gate due to these extra electrons. To read the bits, the control gate is raised to VDD. Let's use 3 volts for VDD. The source and substrate are grounded, and the drain is connected to a current sensor. The sensor will determine if any current is flowing through the transistor. Here, these unprogrammed bits have no negative charge on the floating gate, so a channel is formed and current flows. The sensor will detect that current, and the logic level is interpreted by the sense amp as a 1. Alternatively, these programmed bits with the negative charged floating gates offset the control gate voltage, so no channel is formed, and the sensor translates this lack of current as a logic zero level. Now let's look at erase. The name flash, as in flash memory, gets that name because all cells in a block of cells must be flash erased, or erased all at the same time. Giving up the convenience of erase, or changing just one byte or bit at a time, is what makes flash so much less expensive than EEPROM or other byte erase, other non-volatile technologies, at densities above about one megabit. It gives it a much smaller cell size, which means a much smaller IC size, which means many more die can come off of each silicon wafer. Okay, to erase a programmed or written cell, we need to get these extra electrons off of these floating gates. Standard flash does it this way. The source, substrate, and drain are raised to a high voltage. Let's use 10 volts. And the control gate is grounded. The electrons are pushed away from the grounded control gate and pulled toward the 10 volt substrate. This tunneling oxide here is very thin and the electrons tunnel vertically down into the substrate. 
which cleans all the electrons off and effectively erases the bit. Superflash does an erase very differently. It takes advantage of this high electric field around this raised edge. In this case, the source, substrate, and drain are held at ground, and the control gate is brought high. Again, let's use 10 volts to keep things simple. The electrons are pushed away from the grounded substrate and pulled toward the 10 volt control gate. They quickly tunnel into the control gate across this gap. The extra electrons are now gone, and again, the bit is effectively erased. However, in both cases, too many electrons can be pulled out of a floating gate, leaving the floating gate with a slightly positive charge. This is a condition called over erase. Now over erase is deadly to flash because this residue positive charge on the gate can create cell leaks. And with enough of these leaky gates in a block of cells, then the sensor will misread a zero or no current flowing as a one or leaky cells suggesting current is flowing, effectively making the whole part, the whole memory, unusable. To prevent over erase, conventional flash carefully monitors the cell erase process, which is why the IC erase specs from conventional flash can be minutes of time, not milliseconds, but minutes. Superflash has a key advantage here. The Superflash control gate independently controls current to the drain, which stops these over erase leakage paths completely. And it completely eliminates the over erase problem. So the careful erase control just isn't needed here. This chart shows the result. Sector erase times for Superflash are two times faster, block erase times 20 times faster, and full erase chip times. 1,000 times faster. That's milliseconds versus seconds of time. 